Good afternoon. What we're going to uh, take a look at today is just uh, a dynamic view of the world population growth from 1950 to 2020 and then from 2020 to uh, 2100. Uh, my name is Alan Featherstone. I'm head of agricultural economics and uh, this work was done with uh, Gerald Mashunga um, who is a PhD student within the department. In terms of uh, looking at this, there's been a lot of um, information with regards to the coronavirus and from an agricultural perspective, much of it has not been good news. Um, in terms of, it's important to realize that there is still good news on the horizon. Um, the uh, population continues to grow. Once we uh, um, move past this pandemic, pandemic um, we'll be in a situation where incomes will likely grow in different regions of the world. Um, creating a demand for food. And what I hope to do here in this session and then a few follow-up sessions is to give you a longer-term outlook that uh, is much more optimistic from the agricultural sector. Um, with all the bad news um, running around, many times it's good to have uh, um, some positive news and uh, I think uh, the next few sessions will um, basically um, just provide that view with regards to how important agricultural is. Currently, the egg economy is struggling from low profitability, but uh, I think this is going to be a temporary short-term um, situation and uh, um, the long-run dynamics of population and income growth um, will continue to fuel um, agricultural over um, the next uh, um, several decades. Um, population changes, we're going to focus on that today, um, basically looking at uh, three periods, essentially 1950 to 2020, um, 2020 to 2050, and 2050 to 2100. Major changes in the distribution of population are really going to uh, be a driver of agriculture over the next 80 years. Um, population currently is estimated to be about 7.8 billion individuals. Um, by 2100, um, we're looking at having 10.9 billion people on the planet. The way we're going to look at this is we're going to look at a process or a, um, a cartogram. And this is a map where population is going to be substituted for land area. Um, cartograms allow for a dynamic picture of lots of information essentially by distorting maps. Um, this displays the relative sizes of population by scaling the area to the proportion of the population. Roughly, what you can think we're doing here is uh, creating an equivalent population density. And so we're setting an equal population density across countries and looking at how that would distort the maps. And so it gives a good picture of where population is changing globally over time. The data is from the United Nations population website. Uh, essentially, you have the website there if you want to take a look at it. Um, there are um, the historical aspects from 1950 to uh, um, essentially 2019. And then from 2020 through 2100, the, the, the UN does uh, population projections. Um, and uh, we're using the medium variant. They have uh, a high and a low variant, but uh, we're going to choose the medium variant, um, which uh, hopefully um, will represent the most um, ex uh, expected. The first situation here, we're looking at uh, 1950 to 2020. And so this is the world that we have lived in over the last 70 years. And you can essentially um, see and, and notice some areas in terms of during this point in time, essentially as you go forward, Asia becomes more and more important. Um, Europe becomes less relatively important. Um, Africa begins to grow a little bit. And essentially you do see some uh, um, um, shrinkage in uh, um, North America, but uh, South America in some respects is actually increasing. Um, if you look at the Oceania region, Australia, New Zealand, um, certainly um, you don't see much there. And so this is the world that we lived in. Certainly you have the scale of the populations by the different shading. Um, you can see that uh, India and China are uh, um, more than uh, um, one billion people at this point in time. And so you can see the shading there. But uh, again, this is the world we have lived in. Um, this is the world that uh, we will live in over the next 30 years. And so for those that are relatively young in their career, um, this is the situation that they'll be looking at. 
in some respects, in terms of if you look at uh, North America and South America, um, they continue to uh, um, shrink a little bit from a relative perspective. Um, you look at uh, Australia and New Zealand, they continue to shrink. Probably the one of the big major changes here is that Africa it continues to grow in importance and you actually see some shrinkage um, in parts of Asia. India continues to um, grow, um, um, Pakistan continues to grow, um, but China actually becomes a little bit less important on a relative basis. Then we end up moving out there from 2050 to 2100, and for many of this, this will be our grandkids or our great-grandkids, the world that they live in. Um, in terms of you still see shrinkage in um, North America and South America. Um, in terms of more shrinkage, in terms of uh, um, China in especially, um, but a continued growth in Africa. And so as we look forward, this now looks at the entire time period, I think uh, the world is going to change dramatically with regards to where population is located. Um, based on population projections, Africa is really going to be the center of the universe. In the intermediate term, um, China will uh, begin to become less relatively important, at least from a population perspective. Um, you could argue from an income perspective it will um, um, have a different picture. But even India, in, in some respects, while it is expected to grow um, over the uh, um, next 30 years, once you get out 20 uh, 50 and beyond, um, India relatively begins to shrink. And so um, I think from a long-term perspective, this information is uh, um, pretty, pretty useful. Um, what we'll do in the next few weeks is we'll look at this and we'll move a little bit more um, into uh, looking at the demand and supply from a global perspective in terms of looking at um, the demand for food. And, and so certainly within this graph, um, you can see that uh, um, Africa is going to be a major demander of, of food. Um, but uh, um, also there are going to be countries, because of increasing income, they'll change their diets um, to uh, also um, 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 begin to demand different types of, uh, of, of food products. Um, so with that, um, thanks for uh, taking a look at this and uh, um, hopefully you'll uh, catch some sessions in the upcoming weeks that uh, um, present a positive picture for the food and egg sector and, uh, and hopefully this will help us uh, um, get through this uh, difficult situation we are right now with the pandemic and the economic um, situation within the food and egg sector, realizing that uh, um, this, we're in a short-term bump on a long-term trend that looks very positive for the food and agricultural sector.